Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. It is Thursday, December 16th, 2021. My name's Jennifer Cotton. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Midlothian, Texas, and that means I teach people how to make greeting cards, scrapbook pages, gift packaging, and more with stamps, ink, paper, and lots of cool tools. Um, I'm going live here again for a second time in my Facebook page on December 16th. So now I'm looking for the video um, in my feed. Hey, Stella. Yay. That I'm assuming that means you can hear me. I don't know what the problem was. I had no sound and Scott's not here, so I can't figure it out. Um, I am trying to find my video, though, on my iPad. And, of course, now I can't find it. Uh, just want to make sure I'm live in the correct place over in my business page. Yay, Cindy. So I am strongly disappointed that I couldn't use my new software because I created many graphics for you today. I'm very, very angry that I can't use them. But we're going to go with this and chalk it up to experience. And the microphone was plugged in, but it wasn't working. So hello, everybody. Um... As you come on, say hi. You will get a chance to win um, the three cards I'm going to make today using the Delivering Cheer stamp set. Super cute. Um, I think I forgot to flip it. Oops. Um, let me see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm um, going to use the Delivering Cheer stamp set in my cards today. And you can have a chance to win those by saying hi here on the video, by um, sharing the video and then comment that you share, ask a question, you know, give me some tips, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, any of that, anything you comment basically will get you entered to win the cards. And that all helps my business. I've been doing Stampin' Up! as a demonstrator for 20 years and I do this as a business full time. So everything the sharing and commenting and all that stuff helps me. So, <laughs> um, I appreciate it. Jean couldn't even get into Facebook, had to reset password and everything. Um, yeah, this actually was an issue somehow with my computer with that microphone. And I'm sure it's a simple fix, but not quick enough right now. <laughs> so, I had this is old style um Facebook Live with no graphics, which anyway, I'm not going to dwell on what I don't have to show you now because I'm very upset. But anyway, um I do want to remind you about classes this month. They are Saturday. So, <laughs> thank you, Terry. Saturday is card class scrapbook, stamp a stack, and sampler in person or to go. Uh, the to go ones will be mailed on Monday. And they are, it says graphic on my notes. <laughs> they are, um, you know, the time to sign up has passed basically, but what I have extras of, card class zero, sold out, scrapbook class one extra, sampler one extra, uh, and stamp a stack two extra. So scrapbook is Christmas and New Year's themed. Good morning, everybody. Sampler is uh, winter themed with the peaceful place designer paper, gorgeous sampler. And stamp a stack is artistically inked themed. And I love these cards. Um, Landa has them right now. But anyway, so th those are those four classes. Scrapbook is 15 free with a $20 order. Sampler is 28, includes 20 in merchandise and everything you need, cut, die cut, punched, etc. You just cut your designer paper and assemble with the PDF tutorial and stamp with your own stamps for all of these if you're taken to go. And stamp a stack is $30, 12 cards, four designs, everything's cut, die cut, punched, etc. You stamp and assemble and cut your own designer paper. $20 in merchandise with that one. So if you need those, like if you want to sign up for those, let me know. Um, and then next up, graphic, new catalog kickoff. All the supplies I'm using are in the graphic. Imagine it now. They are <laughs> the Crane of Fortune stamp set, the Slim Sayings 
uh, sorry, Crane of Fortune bundle, Slim Sayings bundle, Happy Hedgehogs, and Catching Butterflies. And then I had the coordinating designer paper and ribbons in this photo. It's gorgeous. It's on the graphic I can't use today. And so, of course, I didn't bring those stamps over here to show you because I was going to show it on the screen. But um, they, that picture is in the email that goes out today at 3 o'clock central. So if you're not on my email list, sign up for that. Um, anyway, this is a new catalog kickoff. Sign up by January 2nd. We will be using stuff from the, holo from the new mini catalog and celebration both in this event it's in person or to go in person is january 8th that's a saturday in desoto texas and to go will be mailed by approximately january 11th um and then you'll have pdf tutorial and all that in addition you can sign up for an optional card swap you will be entered into a door prize drawing for about a 50 dollars value price and um lots of other stuff, product with your fee, etc. So join this event. There will be, actually there won't be a link in this um, video, but you can get the link from me or just make sure you're on my email newsletter list so that you will get that link sent directly to you. Um, retreats coming up, in-person retreats. Now they will, <laughs> yes, Pat, um, be offered to go, but there are two in person that have spots available. I'm going to catch up with you guys in a second because I'm very behind on saying hi. Uh, May 12th through 15th, 2022, and August 11th through 14th, 2022, in Temple, Texas. Um, these retreats include uh, $50 in merchandise, 10 make and takes, of course, in person, your own table. Um, you get to use April on my stamping supplies while you're there, as well as your own um, optional classes that can be added on. And if you take it to go, you can even only take the classes. Lots and lots of, of benefits with these retreats, in person or to go. In person includes all your meals, a bed, all that stuff. Okay, I had a graphic for my share. Paper, designer paper and ribbon share coming up from the new catalogs. Registration is open. You can sign up now and you'll pay later per Stampin' Up! policy. So, um, of course you can't read this, but this is my information about it. So, there are, I have them here. I'm not going to flip through them all, but there are eight new designer papers and um, three new specialty papers, which I showed all of these on a video recently, like I went page by page on the sheets of designs. You will get six by 12 inch pieces in our paper share, or two six by six or two four by six, if that's the size they come in. So you get big pieces, and some of them you get more than one, um, just depending on how Alejandra and I divided them up. It's a great value. It, you would spend over $100. Um, I think it was over $150 to purchase all of the full packs yourself. Um, and it is only $40 for the share to get all those papers. But then um, you can add on the party for only $20 more. You will get a gift, eight make and takes, a Facebook party, videos, um, I think I said eight make and takes videos for the make and takes in addition to a PDF tutorial. Bonus videos from me and Alejandra showing an additional project. Chance to win door prizes. The party is totally worth adding on. Most people that have registered already have added the party because they are smart. <laughs> um, okay, so that's the paper share with or without the party. You can take it with or without, with or without shipping. And then the ribbon share, there are seven new ribbons. I have all but one here. This is a, sorry, this one is a two pack, but you'll get two and a half yards of each of those, plus two and a half yards of all of these, plus the one that's soft succulent that we can't order yet. Um, so that is $22.50 for the ribbon share. You can take one or both. We recommend the ribbon share if you're doing the party because that's the ribbon we will be using. But if you don't, add on the ribbon share, you can substitute any ribbons you have for your make and takes. Um, so 
Ribbon share is $22.50, paper is $40, add $20 for the party. Then you can add shipping to any of these. Um, you can also do online access only for $25, and that will get you the party. You just won't receive the make and takes. Um, but you'll be able to view the party, see the videos, and recreate on your own and participate and all that stuff. Okay, so hello everybody. Hey Stella, hey Jean in North Dakota, hey Cindy, hey Linda, <laughs> hey Susan. Um, hey Linda, I'm glad you're happy to watch this morning. Susan shared, thank you. After y'all share the video on YouTube or Facebook here, comment that you did that so that I'll know because Facebook and YouTube don't tell us who shared. Um, Pat, yay, you can hear me now. Thank you. Hey Debbie. Hey, Carol and Terry. <laughs> um, Charlotte, good morning. Susan loves the stamp set. This is the one I'm using today, Delivering Cheer. Um, Jean, I'm glad you got back into Facebook. Hey, Carol loves the set too. Um, <laughs> Terry, very nice. Janet and Pat. Pat shared, thank you. Hey, Jackie. Pat said, yay, sound fixed. Shannon, good morning. Hey, Jewel. Hey, Pam. Thanks for sharing. Candy, good morning. I'm very behind. Mary Ellen in Montana. Uh, hey, Landa. And hey, Pat. Thanks for sharing. All right. Um, so I told you about the paper and ribbon share. Fun facts. Eight specialty, I mean, eight designer papers, three specialty papers, a total of 34 sheets of 6x12 and 24 sheets of 4x6 and 24 sheets of 6x6. That's a lot of paper. 82 sheets altogether for only $40. Add 20 for the party, which why wouldn't you add the party? Um, you get a bonus gift with the party, eight make and takes videos, all that stuff. And then there's a total of seven new ribbons and we do two and a half yards of each. So you get a total of 17 and a half yards on the paper share. I mean, the ribbon share. Yeah. Okay. Um, coming soon. I still don't have re, um, registration links for these, but coming soon is our Get Ready for Spring Stamp Camp in Canada and the U.S. So if you live in Canada, you'll be able to take that one. Hey, Cindy. Good morning. Hey, Dana. Good morning. Somehow I missed you coming on. <laughs> Hello. Um, I know, Dana. I haven't seen you in quite a little while. If anyone wants to come to class on Saturday, you can see some people. <laughs> um, okay. And then retreat in a box for March will be the next retreat in a box that we advertise. So that's coming out soon. All right. Retreat in a box. The ultimate one for the cruise. You can register now by December 29th. That is your deadline. I had a graphic showing all of the product we're going to be using. And I can't show it because my speaker wouldn't work this morning on my other um, software. So, but it'll be in the email that goes out after this video around 3 p.m. Central today. But this is a retreat in a box on steroids. So it is uh, six classes, tons of make and takes because different classes make different amounts of projects. You're gonna make a travel album, 10 cards, a sam two samplers, a Valentine class, fun folds class, a mini album, so lots of projects. We will be using the Hello Beautiful bundle on page 50, the Artfully Layered bundle on page 33, and the Sweet Conversations bundle on page nine. Didn't bring them over here because I thought I could show this graphic. And also the Friendly Hello stamp set and designer paper, which you're gonna get free with your, <laughs> um, with your, when you purchase this event, mega retreat in a box. You're also gonna get gifts and a bag. It's, you know, you get a lot for your, the value is a lot. Um, so sign up for that by December 29th. You can still register for the cruise by December 29th as well out of Galveston, Texas. We're doing a real cruise on Liberty of the Seas. Um, it's Western Caribbean. And, but December 29th or when the cruise ship stops taking people is the deadline for that. Okay. Um, that is... Where am I putting these? Sorry. 
That's the retreat in a, the mega retreat in a box, I should say. And I'm laughing because Terry said, I would love to come to class Saturday, but it's a little far. She lives in Colorado and I'm in Texas, <laughs> but you would be welcome if you could make it. <laughs> um, okay, next up, Daffodil Daydream card class with games online. This is not until March, so it's just a heads up. Save your cal you know, mark your calendar and save the date for Thursday, March 10th at 6 p.m. Central. So I do have the registration link out there already and all the information, but we be we will be using Daffodil Daydream, which is a, a really pretty bundle from the new mini catalog, and um, I showed it on my video where I did the haul. H-A-U-L haul of all of my new catalog stuff. Um, so you'll get to play bingo for hundreds of dollars in prizes. You'll get to do make and takes. You'll get to gather on Zoom. So from all over the U.S. and um, see other people and talk to other people and all that stuff. Hey, Tommy, good morning. <laughs> Have the coffee brewing so you never know. <laughs> That's a good one, Terry. If you walk in the door, I'll fall over. <laughs> Um, okay, and then if you want to book a vacation now for 2023, you can have almost a whole year to pay it off. You'll have until, I think, October to pay it off of next year. And it's January 2023 on Allure of the Seas out of Galveston, Texas. That is our next stamping cruise. And you can book that now through our travel agent. So if you need any info on any of these events I'm talking about and you're not, you know, you don't, know where to get them just contact me um next up january's paper pumpkin good thing i did print this one and then later i made the graphic i was like oh i won't even need that but it's hug or kisses and hugs <laughs> kisses and hugs um so there is these boxes are an optional you can order those boxes but it's cards and there's a little video stampin up made and um pat all of these offers are listed on my blog under events there's just not necessarily registration links per stampin up policies so some have links and some don't um but you can yes read the details read about them and if you see one missing please feel free to let me know because sometimes i just blank out and don't update my stuff um okay so paper pumpkin is the where is mine there's a recent one I don't even know if this is the most recent that I've received. Um, but the November, I guess that is because I don't have the new one yet. Um, hey, Margie, happy holidays. Paper pumpkin comes in a box. It gets mailed to your door. It's a surprise. Um, they give us sneak peeks, but not no full details. You get a stamp set that you cannot buy anywhere else. It only comes in that kit. You get whatever accessories you need for that. And you get adhesive for that kit. You get instructions open this up and there is our instructions you always get an ink spot and you get all your supplies to make the projects so um the one for january is <laughs> thank you pat is valentine themed or they say it's um definitely not only valentine it can be anniversary weddings birthdays or those just because days so anyway, there's a video sneak peek that kind of shows some of the elements that will come in the kit and kind of how it will look. And you're going to make um, 10 cards, two designs, so five of each if you make the kit as it comes. And they're, they are, um, if you can kind of see in the video, they're heart shaped and they're four and a half by four and a fourth. So they're a different size and shape of a card. And then those boxes I showed you in that picture, they're called the Kisses and Hugs Mini Treat Boxes. They will be sold separately, $10 for 20 boxes, tags, and gold cord. It's a great deal. Um, they'll be while supplies last, and anyone who is a Paper Pumpkin subscriber can order them. Okay, so how to order that Paper Pumpkin is you can either subscribe. There's a link in the video when it's finished. Anyway um in facebook and youtube or you can just go to my website and pre-purchase one month six months 12 months or uh, one month three months six or 12 months worth 
that's not a subscription that's I'm paying for all of it up front and then you won't bill me again ever unless I go back and do it again um, the deadline every month is the 10th to get that month's paper pumpkin so by January 10th you will want to get this month's paper pumpkin all right um, so I think well I'm almost ready to point the camera down but I have some cards I've received in the mail recently that I want to show you and yeah and then I'll point the camera down and I have a little bit more new product that I got in <laughs> so I want to show you that um, it's quick like I'm not doing the whole catalog thing I just have a, some new stuff I got I have even more coming every time I place an order I get more hey Terry good morning make sure I didn't miss any body there yeah we're good oh yes I said hi to Margie okay so this card is from Alma Ross and it came in one of these size envelopes like I don't know what these are called but like where you mail a check so it's a cute size card very cute card from Alma there lots of little sentiments and stuff on the inside thank you Alma by the way my Christmas cards have not been mailed yet this card is from uh, Peggy Malo, and um, I want to point out, and I mean, I know some post offices are more strict than others, but this is a very thick, kind of heavy card, and she just sent it with one stamp. So, <laughs> they let it go. Um, but yes, it's very pretty, that snowman. So, thank you, Peggy. And then this one is from Barbara Cameron. Super cute. That's from, that stuff is from the annual catalog, uh, tidings and trimmings. It's, the name is something like that. Anyway, there's lots of products there, but that, that is a good one. I used it a lot this year. And then Julie Poindexter, thank you so much. Super cute uh, snowman card. <laughs> yes, Terry, Peggy is awesome. She's also the, a team member now. Okay, I don't know why I put yours back in the envelope, Sharon. But this is from Sharon Jacobs, using up some memories and more cards there, I believe. Awesome, easy way to make cards. Of course, there's this note inside. And then um, I wanted to show this one um, from Pat. Pat's on here, Pat Coates. Um, just to show that she, I've mentioned this on the videos before that you can do this. She put the um, card in a clear envelope and then put that inside the white envelope so that just protects it when it goes through the mail I love these clear envelopes that we carry but um so here's the card Pat sent with one of I think mine and hers favorite um, I guess sweet from this catalog which half of it sold out now but the whimsy and wonder thank you Pat and last no not last uh, Helen Sullivan the deer so cute thank you Helen and last but not least is from Judy Thetford. Thank you, Judy. Love the glittery, love glitter paper. Um, warm wishes from our home to yours. All right, so thank you for the cards. Every time I, after I show them on a video, then I can go put them on my little card display rack in the living room for holiday cards. Okay, so thank you guys. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna point the camera down now. I have to do the old transition because I think technology was not my friend today. Um, so hopefully everything will go good. Flip that. There we go. Yes, um, Pat, I agree. All beautiful cards. Love getting Christmas cards in the mail. So much fun. All right, so I'll have to straighten that out in a second when I move this stuff. Um, so I can see better. But just a reminder, this is all the papers you're going to get in the paper share. So there's a 4 by 6 a 6 by 6 There's three specialty papers, which I showed on the other video. But um, this Mother of Pearl is my favorite. It's so gorgeous. It's the haul video if you want to see me take these out of the package and all that. And then eight, well, including these two, eight new designer papers. Um, so two... We have six by six and four by six, and the rest are 12 by 12. And there's, you know, Valentine, there's sports there, and flowers and tropical, and then just other stuff. So, all that. And then, of course, the ribbon. I'm just doing it here so you can hopefully, or just in case you can see it differently or better. Yeah, super crooked there. 
Um, anyway, that's six of the seven new ribbons. We just haven't been able to order one of them yet. We will soon, hopefully. I mean, I don't know any information, but this is the cord to my speaker that wouldn't work today. <laughs> Even though the light is on, it wasn't connecting properly somehow. I don't know why to the computer. So I'll have to work it out. And I'm sure Scott will tell me what not to do next time. Um, okay, so some new product real quick just to, these are things I haven't shown on the videos yet. So I wanted to do it, but it's super quick. So I've talked about these pebble enamel shapes a few times, but now I have them because I kept forgetting to order them for some reason. And um, that's what they look like. Super cute. They're like little rocks that are sticky back and they're shiny. And then they go with this On the Horizon bundle, which there's a whole suite. There's matching designer paper. I showed that already. Um, but I described this one a little and it's a really nice um, sort of beachy vibe, but just nature as well. Relax, enjoy your day, thinking of you, thanks for everything, etc. And then the dyes are like fences and sort of land or sand or water, mountains, grass, all kinds of stuff. So that is cool. Um, I got this one in case I want to use it on our cruise gifts because we're not using it for uh, like make and takes, but we I might use it on some of the gifts which we haven't designed yet. So it's called Seize the Day, S-E-A-S, -E the day. There's a jellyfish, crab, octopus, a couple of different fish, um, bubble, stamp, seaweed, and then Seize the Day, wishing you oceans of happiness. Thank you from the depths of my heart. And then of course, coordinating dies, two sheets worth, all the little creatures get cut out as well as there's a starfish stamp as well which there's a die for. Um, and then this like seaweed bubble oval opening die as well. So that's going to be fun to play with. Okay. And then just a couple more. These are all coming out in January, January 4th for customers. Or if you're a demonstrator or you join as a demonstrator, you can get them now. And you can even get them in your starter kit. Flowering Flowers, that's just a gorgeous new stamp set flowers, beautiful flowers. They're very like watercolory. No need to color in. It's going to fill in all the colors for you. And then lots of greetings there. So cute. Sending a card instead of a text. <laughs> um, let's set sail is a bundle with a punch. So there's a sailboat punch. I don't know if that's the actual name, but oh yeah, it's called sailboat builder punch. I forgot to save the paper on purpose. Um, and then the Let's Set Sail stamp set, which has the parts to make your sailboat. You know, you can stamp them in different colors. Some, I think that's a water image. Um, another water image, some birds, and then some greetings as well. I like that adventure awaits. That might be good for our cruise as well. And last but not least, Hello Ladybug. Super cute new ladybug bundle. There's a punch. It punches out the body and the wings of one of the shapes of the ladybugs. And then um, there's another shape of a ladybug as well, though. There's a big leaf in there. Lots of greetings. It's a very cute set, but I didn't think it was really my style until I saw a card that Pat Coates made with, like, flirty flamingo in black, I believe. So it's not only cutesy, which I liked, and I was like, okay, I'll add that to my list. Um, don't forget when you place an online order with me this month, you're going to get a free class packet to make four cards. Uh, you do have to use the host code unless it's over 150 and it needs to be at least $25 to get the free class kit. It'll make these four cards, which I've already shown in a video. So you can go back and check that out if you like. And, um, they are using the Shaded Summer stamp set, so you'll need that. You'll, these get mailed in January. You'll need that to make your cards. But we cut, die cut, punch everything we can. And then if your order, actually I'll bring this back. Starting today, if your order with the host code, which I didn't print the host code because my thing, so. <sighs> let me, <laughs> let me pull up 
pull it up over here on my computer because my computer's right here. Love technology. Okay, the host code is, I have to find something to write it on. I'm just gonna jot it down here real quick. I mean, it's in the, on my blog. It's, uh, it was emailed out this morning and you can always just ask me for it. Y-Q-J-U-Z-J-T-K. Um, if you place an online order at my store of 25 or more with this host code until the end of the month, you'll get the class packet. If it's 50 or more, you'll also get a free full pack of elegant faceted gems. And if it's 150 or more, don't use the host code. You'll still get those items, 150 or more. And you'll get these Summer Shadows dies free from me. That'll all get mailed to you in June. So any questions, let me know. Where does the host code go? It's when, you're, when you go to your shopping cart, shopping bag, you'll see checkout. Above that, it says add host code. So that's where you add your host code. Um, okay, so... I'm going to make three cards today with Delivering Cheer stamp set. This is retiring. Lots of retiring stuff has sold out. So you want to get that stuff now. I'm going to go over to my um, report from Stampin' Up! And I think this one is still good to go. Oh, nope. It says low inventory. Ah, it did not say that yesterday. And stamp sets go, are selling out faster than anything else. So if you want this stamp set, get it now. So this is, I'm like talking fast, like it's that urgent. Um, but it, ordering wise, it is. So this one is, um, I'm checking my notes here. I think I said everything. A really fun set that's, um, I don't know. I think it's different than some we've had in the past anyway. So, it has the bottom of a lady. Two of them from the waist down. One is in a really fancy, big, poofy skirt. And then her little legs coming out and little dress shoes. And the other is the bottom of a coat. And then her legs, which can have leggings. Or you could make it be like stockings or whatever. Uh, I'm just trying to say what we have, what she has on under here is either a dress or these are her pants or leggings or jeans. And then boots, which are just solid. So they just get stamped in whatever color you stamp in. And then there's three different things to put on top of the girl. <laughs> so there is a, you don't see the face. What she's holding is so big, you can't see her face. So there's one hands holding a bunch of gifts, hands with the coat on uh so the arms these arms are naked these arms have a coat and a scarf and gloves and they're holding a bouquet of like wild flowers and then these same thing coat gloves etc holding a christmas tree so those two kind of go with the boots one and the gifts kind of go with the fancy dress one but i've seen them mixed and matched um and then there's a little image that's like the ground they can be standing on, like a snowy ground. And then greetings. So we have to with a colon and from with a colon. We have sending love and Christmas cheer and warming thoughts to you this season. So great stamp set. Um, so hopefully I'm going to show you some good options for the stamp set today. My first card that I'm gonna show is the last one that I made when I was making these. And um, I had made, I got black. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, I thought I had black ink on this. I, anyway, I had made, my other two are more, you know, fancy or elaborate, so to say. So I wanted this one to be simple for many reasons, including for me, <laughs> keep it quick and easy. Um, but then I also thought, you know, why don't we just do one in only black and white. The other ones have lots of color. They're colored in, etc., etc. So this is going to be a black and white card with delivering cheer. So what I have here is my card base. So you just take your eight and a half by eleven cardstock and cut it in half. 
and that gives you uh, two cards out of one sheet of paper. And when we fold it in half, it will fit into the invitation size envelope, just like, you know, 99% of the cards I showed you guys earlier that people sent me. So measuring's easy, cut it in half. Finding envelopes is easy because we sell them and they're very nice. Um, so that is like not a deterrent if you're new to stamping. And then I'm just gonna fold this card base in half. This is basic white, by the way, with my bone folder. Um, that will make the inside less wrinkly. And then I am going to, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Fold it in half with the bone folder. Oh, I was gonna say it's gonna be portrait instead of landscape, so it'll go up and down like this. And then I'm just gonna set that aside for now and work on the front of the card. And then for the front, I'm going to use some black and white designer paper. Um, we have some new ones coming out. Some of the designs in the new catalog have black and white on the back, but this is a great one. It's a gingham check, black and white. On the back is a, I believe, crushed curry floral pattern. And it's cut to four by five and a four, so it fits perfectly right on the front there. This paper is from the Pattern Party designer paper that you can only get with a 150 or more party or order. So if you're the host of a party and your friends order 150 or more, you can choose host benefits. Or if you order 150 or more, you can choose host benefits. And um, so this paper, it's a stack of, I think it's 48 sheets. It's a lot of sheets of paper, first of all. They're 12 by 12. And they're all black and white on one side, and then all different kinds of patterns on the other sides. Different color schemes, different, you know, we have flowers, we have stripes, we have, uh, what are those things called? Not scallops, really, but little half circles of different shapes that are tiny and lots of pretty colors. Uh, and then you see these black and white patterns on the back. There's all different kinds of patterns. So we have some diagonal colorful stripes that would go great with our new rainbow stuff. But then on the back, black and white flowers. So it's a huge variety. We have another one here that'll go great with our rainbow stuff. Um, and then black, black with little white dots on the back. So anyway, we have leaves, stripes, hearts. It's so versatile, right? Um... And look how many sheets you get with, I think four of each design. Because I don't think I've combined this pack with any other packs. And I'm having four of the ones I haven't used yet. So let me just turn in the catalog real quick. Tell you, so when you place an order or have a party of 150 or more, you get at minimum, it goes up from there, 10% of the order amount. So 10% of 150 is $15 in free stuff. Well, these host only gifts at the back of the catalog are valued. I mean, not valued. They cost less than they would cost if they were for sale. So this is a $30 value of designer paper for $18. Now you could do your 150 order, choose this and just pay the $3 plus tax difference. Um, it's 48 sheets for each of 12 designs. So Anyway, and we have other host gifts, and in our other mini catalogs, we always have host gifts. Now, one of the ones in the holiday has already sold out, because the stamps are while supplies last, so got to get on that. Okay, long story short, cut your designer paper four by five and a fourth. <laughs> hey, Valley Chick, good morning. I know, I love the black gingham. I think I've used that one the most. Cindy, your, lip, your list is getting longer. Thank you, Catherine, for coming back. Sorry about my darn... Uh, what a speaker problem. Darn, darn, darn. Um, hey, Julie, I showed your card earlier. Good morning. I don't know if you were here yet. Hey, Kim. Hey, uh, Mary. Good morning. Hey, Ann. Thank you guys for sharing. And Terry said, oh, awesome, Terry. She said, um, Peggy was excited to be on my team, which, yes, awesome. Thank you. Um, what was I going to say? 
How much do they consider things to be on low inventory? I don't think they tell us that, Julie. I don't think we know the number, but I've seen things on low inventory last hang for several days and I'm seeing, seeing them sell out in hours. It's and they tell us that too, like it is very unpredictable. So they don't, once they make that decision and put it on low inventory, um, they don't know how fast it's gonna go. So yeah, unfortunately we don't know that one. <laughs> um, good morning, Valley Chick. And, oh, Carol says she wants to use a set to make a birthday card for her daughter, yes. And Dana wants a whole pack of the black and white gingham. That would be awesome, right? Okay, so I have a piece of white, two and a fourth by four. And then my black is two and a half by four and a fourth. So I just normally do fourth inch increments, smaller or bigger. So that's what that is. And I'm going to stamp on this white piece, my black and white here stamping. So I have Memento Black Ink. That's my favorite black ink if I'm stamping in black or going to use our Stampin' Blends alcohol markers. Um, and it's great for photopolymer stamps, which is what we're using, of course. So this stamp set is photopolymer. They just peel off the sheet here, stick to your clear block, stamp, 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 clean, stamp in a different color or put away. But just clean in between colors and before you put away. And I will be cleaning a stamp today, so I'll show you that at that time. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the bottom of the girl first. I find that to be easiest. I am pretty far away from my actual stamping because of this video. So I'm going to try to scoot up so I can see to stamp properly. But I basically want her feet pretty close to the bottom and then just try to center her left to right. And then so I'll just stamp, hold it straight down for several seconds and then pick it up. Also, if you don't, this is the dress, by the way, with the dress shoes, bottom of the girl. If you don't have a firm, hard table, mine is like basically countertop um, quality. It's not a countertop, but um, then use our stamp and pierce mat under to get that clean, solid image. I'm trying to grab it. It's this guy right here, 126199 for $5. That will give you a stamping surface when your table is plastic, flexible, whatever. And then the next image I'm going to use is the hands holding the gifts. This one is made to go with the dress because it's, um, well, first of all, her hands don't have gloves on, but also it's straight across. The, the coat is angled down in the center because these two images are more of a triangle and the gifts are straight. The way people get around mixing and matching is just hand cutting the top part out and then making it look right. Okay, so you want to align this. It is photopolymer. You could use your Stamparatus, but you want to kind of get that solid line of the bottom of the gift a little bit into the solid line of the dress so that they meet up and there's not like a, a space in between. It's pretty easy but you definitely could use your Stamparatus, which is a stamp positioning tool, to do that instead. Okay, so there is that. Doesn't that look cool? So this card, like I said, it's gonna be all black and white. There we go. And then for our greeting, I did die cut a label, but <laughs> I know I cut it. Uh. Hold on, let me look in one place real quick. Where is that other stuff? Okay, I lost it. So, I whoo, almost showed you the card, darn it. Oh, there it is, it's stuck to the bottom, yay. So I pre-die cut, to save time, a tag from, these are called Taylor Made Tag Dies. This is the smallest size tag of the, there's two different styles in here, and then there's four sizes that you can layer. I'm not doing that, but you can layer them or just use them individually. Um, but anyway, this one die cuts more straight edges where the tag portion is. The other design has fancier. 
And then also I'm not using, but there are these reinforcer images that you can die cut out several at a time. So circles and little half circle type um, that match the holes that it cuts for the tags or circles or half moon kind of, not half moon. I don't know what you call it. It's more oval, but there's like a straight line. Anyway, you get 10 dies with this set. They're in the annual catalog tailor-made tags. So they're pretty popular. I pre-die cut a black one in that smallest size, and I'm going to heat emboss, yay, with white embossing powder. So I have my Versamark ink pad. This is a pad that stays wet long enough. It's very sticky and wet for the powder to stick to it. So in general, you cannot heat emboss with our regular, definitely not with Memento, it dries really quickly and our regular ink pads, which for some reason I don't have one nearby, but like these. In general, they don't stay wet long enough. Um, there are exceptions that people do, but anyway. So Versamark also is a watermark. It can be used two different ways, um, and really there's other techniques to do with it, but you can just stamp on dark colored paper and use that darker image. It'll just dry and stay dark but we're heat embossing. Okay, so I have my little tag, which actually I need, I'm gonna put the hole on the left side, and I'm going to wipe it with a dryer sheet, an unused dryer sheet. That takes the static out. That's my favorite way, even when we sold um, other things in the past, I always use the dryer sheet. Then I have some white embossing powder, which is sold in a set called Basics embossing powder. We also have the metallics, and I'm going to use gold on other cards later, but I've pre-embossed them for you. Um, and my white powder is just in an old box that I have. Um, so if you can use like a Tupperware container or something for, not real Tupperware, but like fake Tupperware from the dollar store or something, it's a, it makes it easier to emboss in my opinion. But you can also just pour it from the container, have scratch paper underneath, shake off the excess, and then funnel that back into your container. Okay, so we're going to say Sending Love and Christmas Cheer from this st same stamp set. So I'm going to stamp that in Versamark ink on the tag. And I, again, I'm just have, I have the hole to the tag facing left. I'm going to put the lid back on my Versamark so I don't flip any powder on there. And then I scoop under the powder... I scoop the cardstock under the powder and then I turn it over and thump off the excess. And then you can go back if you missed a spot, which I had missed on my C there. You can also, if you have, um, if you need to remove any pieces of powder that stuck where you didn't want them, you can use a little tiny old paintbrush. And then you just take your heat tool and heat it up. So it does need to be the heat tool. Blow dryer will just blow it off there. It doesn't get hot enough. And it needs to be on number two, which is high. You probably can't see that. It's tiny, tiny handwriting, but all the way up is high for heat embossing. And when your paper is this tiny, especially, do not hold it because you will burn yourself like I did when I made my sample because I was in a rush. And I was like, I'm professional. I got this. <laughs> I'll hold one end and do and then switch, but it got hot and burned me a little. Um, so a clothespin, just keep it clipped to your cord and then it'll always be there. And then just, this should um, heat up really fast once it once the tool heats up. And as soon as it's hot, I mean wet and shiny looking, move on, don't keep heating it. So I'm just moving to my left as I go here. Hopefully you saw it change into, turn this off. Hopefully you saw it change into bright white and shiny instead of grainy and less bright white. You always wanna check it when you're finished, just reflect it in a light, see if any spots are grainy and not as white or whatever your color is. Because if they are, you need to reheat them or else they're, that burst of marking eventually dries and when you wipe it, your image comes off and you have a hole in it. Okay. 
Now we'll put it together. I do have some gingham ribbon here, so cute. And adhesive. I'm using my stamp and seal. Love it. Doesn't take too much. I'll just put top, bottom, and a little bit in the middle on the back of the girl. And then that goes on my basic black cardstock. I'll also, because I know I'm not wrapping any ribbon around this designer paper that goes directly on the front, I'm going to go ahead and attach that. Again, I don't need a lot of adhesive. This is a very strong adhesive. And then the girl, this piece where she's attached to the black, that's going to go on uh, with Stampin' Dimensionals. And I remembered after I made this card that I have black Stampin' Dimensionals. So see, they're black. These are the minis, which is my favorite. Um, it doesn't really matter, but on my other card, I used white, but I still used five. Um, you can use large or mini. You can use way more than this if you want. But I like, or I don't, whatever. I don't use very many. <laughs> and then she will go centered top to bottom, but scooted over toward the left. And then my greeting is going to go at an angle down here at the bottom. So the left part will be on the white cardstock I stamped and the right part will be on the designer paper. So the stamped is raised up. Where's my dimensionals? The right side is not raised up. So I'm gonna put a dimensional on the right and adhesive on the left. And then it will all be even. And the angle is it's going um, up to the right. And then I'm going to tie a bow with my black and white gingham ribbon. This one, I believe, is carrying over from our holiday catalog, which means it will still be available when the catalog goes out. And I am almost out here, but I do have a new roll, so... Don't worry for me. Um, but I am going to try to use as little as possible because I want a small bow anyway. So I'm just going to be kind of frugal with it here. But um, I'm going to make a bunny ear bow. So I have two bunny ears, one in each hand. The ribbon is flat, flat, flat. It wasn't turned and twisted as I made these two bunny ears. There's a tail on the left, and then the right is still attached to my roll of ribbon, and I have lots of space in between, which is very important for this to work. And then I take my right loop and cross it over the left, and then push that right loop down into the rabbit hole. And then, of course, pull, and you, need, you'll, you will then need to adjust your bow and get it the right size and make the loops match and all that stuff. And then um, I think that size is good. And then of course, trim it down and add it to your project. So there's that. And then I'll just use a mini glue dot. So mini glue dots, peel the protective coating back until you see one dot push your embellishment into the dot, pull it off. We're trying not to touch the glue dot too much. And then I put this bow on at the angle to match the tag versus straight on the card um, because I tried it the other way and I didn't like it. <laughs> and then I just ripped off that excess paper from my blue dots. Okay, so there is our first card, black and white. I hope you like this. I thought the black and white turned out really good, and it saves you so much time hand cutting these out, coloring, etc. And there's lots of black and white backgrounds you could put on it, um, and you wouldn't even have to heat emboss your reading if you didn't want. Just stamp it in black on a piece of white paper. Um, so, that's the black and white one. That's the simple one. <laughs> then we'll go a step up and then a step up. But don't worry, I've pre-done a lot of steps. So, um, okay. And don't forget, you can win the three cards I'm making today. Possibly, you'll have a chance if you comment. Just say hi. Comment on the video or share the video and comment that you shared. 
or do both because that gets you two entries. So why not do both? Um, and thank you guys for being here. And same goes on YouTube if you're watching the replay on YouTube. Okay, lots of supplies for this one. Ooh. Well, I hit something, but it didn't, I don't think it really affected you guys. Um, so my card base for this card is Soft Succulent. And then I have a four by five and a fourth basic white. Then I have a piece of, I'll give you these measurements in a second, polished pink and basic white, and then a scrap of basic white. And I have some Stampin' Blends, I have some in color um, jewels, and I have my polished pink ink pad, and I'm going to also need my Memento Black ink pad. And then for my stamping, I am using, or in addition, I'm sorry, to Delivering Cheer, I'm using the Encircled in Warmth stamp set for my greeting. So you'll see when I use that, how that goes. But from this set, I'm using the feet of the girl um, from the coat or with the coat and the boots. The little leg warmers, so cute. And the tree image. Sorry, I was off screen there. Okay, so first of all, oh wait, I'm also using the gifts image. I forgot, I have to clean it off which right when I started this video, I was like, I forgot to wash my chamois, not wash it, but re-wet it. So let me show you. Your Simply Chamois um, will dry when you're not using it, which is what you want. So it's very hard right here. It's not wet at all. It is wet some in the middle. I just need to take this to the sink, run, I like hot water, run hot water and squeeze, which will take out the excess ink and re-moisten it. But don't worry, because I also have my working chamois. <laughs> I have so many chamois, which has just recently been re-moistened. It's all nice and squishy and wet. And that's what I'll clean with. But you just wet these, clean them. I mean, clean your stamps. And I always check it on scratch paper and make sure there's no excess ink in there. And then you're good to go. And then when this gets too much ink, where when you clean it, you're putting ink on there. Take it to the sink and rinse it out. I actually also wash mine in the washing machine with a little laundry detergent ever so often. So, and then these cases are sold separately. They are in our um, catalog and online store. And they are, um, you get four for like six bucks, super cheap. They're our stamp cases. They're these empty. Anyway, uh, oh, but don't store it in a sealed bag because it'll get moldy because it's wet. So store it, store it in anything you want that it can breathe. Okay, so my card base, soft succulent, I'm gonna fold this in half and then I'm going to make Jennifer's favorite, easiest ever fun fold, a Z fold card. So I'm gonna fold the front backwards all the way to the left and um, use my bone folder again. So it's basically folded in half. And there's your little Z shape simple fun fold. And then <laughs> Diana, yes. Um, and you do classes too, Diana, like me. So after classes now, I just throw them all, any that have been used at classes. And then I throw my two in there at, at the same time. It gets them like squeaky clean. It, they still stained. And I know you know that, but they, they stain. But as long as the ink has rinsed out, you're good to go. I'm glad you like this card, Lorraine. Thank you very much. Hey, Mary, thanks for sharing. Thanks, Cindy, also, and Stella, and Jackie, and Pat. I'm glad you guys like it. And Diana. So if anyone missed it, Delivering Cheer is low inventory. I would say get it today if you want it. <laughs> I hope it lasts because I have to do a second video today in another group. <laughs> Please last until that video. Otherwise, I'll be scrambling to change it. Okay, so Z fold card. Um, I have my four by five and a fourth white. That's going to go on the inside. And then again, I'm going to give you the measurements on this pink and white, but that's going to go here. So usually I stamp something down in the, that's going to go like right in the center, I should say. 
So usually I stamp something in the bottom right hand corner of the white piece that's on the inside because it shows a little on the front. Sometimes I stamp down the side, etc. And then sometimes I put a greeting on the inside. And that's what I'm going to do today. So for my, for the inside piece, that's four by five and a fourth. This is a portrait shape card. I'm going to stamp, um, you warm my heart from encircled in warmth, which is also retiring. Let me check on that one real quick. Uh, I think it was fine yesterday, but yeah, still not low. Who knows? I mean, this one wasn't low yesterday, but, um, but it is retiring and it's just all greetings. There's five different ones and you warm my heart is the largest one and it will fit in a circle shape. So you could use your circle dies. There's even some dies that coordinated with in the catalog that are from the annual that I don't own. But anyway, I'm using you warm my heart and it fits in a circle shape, but we're not doing it that way today. Okay, so it's a nice big stamp. They are red rubber. Um, those require assembly. If you're, if you joined this page and you're like, or this video and you're like, what the heck is going on? Don't worry. I can teach you all of this stuff. Um, and you need to know how to assemble those stamps. Once you know, you're fine. But okay. So I'm inking up. You warm my heart in polished pink on our regular ink pads. You want to tap, tap, tap. Don't press hard. Just tap but go to different spots on the pad. You can tap as many times as you want, just don't press hard. Because if you do, you're gonna get ink all over your edges, which come off on your card, or in photopolymer case, all over the clear block, which comes off on your card. Um, and then this is gonna go up, up in the top left-hand corner so that I know it won't show when the card is closed. Isn't that cute? And then, the, let me grab a piece of scratch paper. What I want to show on the bottom right is just the gifts. So this is the girls with the hands holding the gifts. So I'm gonna ink it up in polished pink. Even though I'm only stamping a portion of it, I ink up the whole thing because it never fails. If I think, oh, I'll just do the part I need. I miss one sliver and it ruins my project. Okay, so I inked it up. I'm looking at her arms and I'm placing this hanging off the bottom. It's all the way to the right bottom corner, but it's hanging off her. I don't want her arms stamped on this white paper. So they are hanging off the bottom edge. And then it's just a stack of gifts there in the corner. So cute. All right. And then... What else? So that's that's all we're stamping on that. That's going to go inside the card. Then I have a scrap of white for this hands with the gloves and the coat and the scarf holding the tree. And I'm going to stamp that on the scrap of white in Memento Black. Uh, Memento is a different type of ink pad. You can press hard on it. So take out your aggressions on that one. Always have your re-inker, which we sell, so you can have it super dark black. My team gift this year, if they went to the party, was a new memento pad. Um, okay, now this white, it's basically the same as the first card. Where's my ruler? But I made three with this same cut, and some of them... Oh, no, I guess I made two. Yeah, and I think it's slightly different, but... Where's my ruler? <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, so just in case you want to know, it's two and a fourth by four and a fourth. I think it's a little taller than the other. Two and a fourth, four and a fourth, which means this is two and a half by four and a half on the polished pink that it will go on top of. So on this one, I want to stamp the bottom half of the girl with the boots, and the boots need to be pretty close to the bottom. I did stamp this my first time too high so pretty close to the bottom see how beautiful it stamps so crisp and clear that's the quality of our stamps combined with a well inked pad and a surface that's good for stamping on 
Um, okay, so now I'm just coloring. So I, oh, that's not true. Let me stamp one more thing. Um, so there's this little stamp of leg warmers or tights. Uh, I call them leg warmers. I think they're really tights. Um, that's go on the exposed leg part of her legs. There is a top and a bottom. And what I learned a long time ago from a mistake I made during a video is if you're not sure what's the top and what's the bottom, look at the front of your stamp case and see how they orient, oriented the image on there. So the little stripes are on bottom and the dots are on top. And But I still wrote a T here for me for the video T for top. <laughs> okay, so that, the little leg warmers just get stamped in polished pink right there on her legs. They're a perfect fit. It's so cute. She has very skinny, shapely legs. Nice for her. And um, now I can just color it in. So don't worry. I didn't pre-color her, but I pre-colored the other part and cut it out, so don't worry. But for her, let me remember what I did. I'm using light petal pink. So Stampin' Blends, by the way, alcohol-based markers. They're, they're the best coloring I've ever done in my life because they're so simple. Anyone can do it. You can look artistic even if you're not. They don't put harsh lines. They blend literally together so that it's smooth lines. And um, because they're alcohol-based, you want a water-based ink so it doesn't blend also and mix together. And so Memento Black is water-based. Okay, so I'm using light petal pink for the bottom of her coat and on her stockings. So they're like pink stockings with darker pink pattern on them. So I'm going to use the brush tip end for the coat. I'm not blending on this, which means using two or more colors. Uh, I'm just coloring it a solid color, which in this case is light petal pink. It's okay to go a little bit higher there because we know our tree image will cover it. And then um, coloring right on top of that ink because because our inks, our regular inks are water-based as well. So on the legs, I colored petal pink on top of this, the legging, the stock, stockings. Now I'm blanking out on that word. Okay, then for the tree portion, don't worry, I'm not gonna color this whole thing because uh, I pre-did one. But I, to make it look whatever, this is either a cuff of her coat or a sweater peeking out. Either way, I used dark petal pink on that, on the cuffs, and then light petal pink on the arms so it matches the coat on below. So again, no blending. I'm just using a dark and a light. I used light soft suede, the fine point, for the tree trunk, which I almost forgot to color but she is holding it by the trunk. Then dark polished pink for the gloves. So of course both gloves. And you can just keep coloring on top of this same color forever if you feel like it. It's never going to break, break down your paper. It will bleed through, that's normal. But, um, and it won't create those harsh lines. And then I have Light Evening Evergreen, and I'm actually going to use Light Soft Succulent. I have this for my next card um, for the tree. So I'm just going to do a small section of it here, but I did do the whole thing. So I took my dark, I mean, sorry, it's a darker color, but my Light Evening Evergreen. And I'll just do one little section here, but I kind of just traced the outline that Stampin' Up! gave us of this tree. It's very messy, so to say. Um, and then added some, like, kind of completely filled in some of the sections with this dark. And just went over the whole thing with light. So this is the blending part. You want to mix the light and dark together. And when your dark isn't really blending in, just keep going over it with the light. <laughs> but go over the whole area, not just that one spot. 
and that creates the whole blended look. You can go back and add more dark and then go back and add more light. You can pick up and lighten sections with our color lifter. Put this back over here, um, et cetera. So once you get it all colored in, it kind of looks like this one on the left, and then I hand cut that out. There is not dies or punches for this set. So hand cut that out. Super cute. And then for assembly, I think we're ready. I don't even have ribbon on this card, if y'all can believe it. So I have my stamp and seal. I'm going to attach the white piece that has the legs on it to the polished pink. And then go back and check your comments. Hey, Laura, thank you also about the black and white card. Nancy loves this set. Um, sorry, trying to catch up here. Kathy, also good morning. Hey, Alejandra. Jean says, love that font. I think you're talking about you warm my heart. Yes, it's hard to describe, but it's a really pretty font in that set. And I'm just describing this for my vision impaired uh, customers and friends. Um, it's got all different fonts. They're all pretty much different. But the one that says you warm my heart is really pretty. And it's so large. I love that. Um, hey, Elizabeth. Good morning in Georgia. Okay, so attached that. Now I'm gonna attach the white piece that says you warm my heart to the inside of the card. Of course, there's the border like normal. And of course, with Stampin' Up, all the colors match and coordinate. So I have my soft succulent ink, I like marker, soft succulent paper, polished pink, polished pink, polished pink. It's all matching and coordinating. Um, polished pink there as well. Uh, what am I missing? I'm missing the designer paper. <laughs> I think I forgot to cut that. Okay. I did use some designer paper on this. I always put something on this left flap and then something in the middle part portion here. It is this designer paper here called Tidings of Christmas. And it's in our annual catalog. So it's not like retiring anytime soon. And I'm just showing y'all the patterns here real quick because I've used this many times. But this one right here with the trees on it is what I'm using. So it's um, white with evergreen elegance and soft succulent trees that are like pine trees that are hand drawn. So it's just like the stick with the little brush strokes coming out left and right. It's not like a detailed, realistic tree. And then there's dots in the background, small, like, needle, I mean, uh, fine point pin dots. Okay, so this should be, it's a standard measurement I do every time, one and seven eighths by five and a fourth. So I'll just trim that real quick. I got paper on my paper trimmer over here. Remove that. Okay. One, and of course I want the trees to be going up and down. So I'm gonna cut one and seven eighths first. This is six by six paper, by the way. And then five and a fourth. Okay. And then throw this down. So let me attach that designer paper to the left front flap just flat there with my stamp and seal and I will go ahead and attach the tree that I hand cut out with mini Stampin' Dimensionals on top of her legs I'm just going to use three Stampin' Dimensionals like a triangle there and then you just place it of course obviously so that it covers up that middle section, super easy. And then to place this on the card front, I want it basically to be half and half to the that front flap designer paper. The right half will have no adhesive so that we can open the card like this. So to do that, I'm just gonna flip it exactly upside down versus turning this polished pink piece left to right, just upside down. 
and then I can see where to place my dimensionals on that middle section. Hopefully that makes sense so that they will be scooted over far enough. And then I'll just add three more. I cut my nails the other day. I always cut them now as short as I can because they grow really fast and they are not cute. And But I had them so short when I was making these samples that I couldn't pick up from the sheet. The dimensional is very easy. They've grown out already in like two days later. But it was like, what the heck? I went too short this time. Okay, so I have my dimensionals there. I just used six, by the way. And then I can attach that. Hopefully, yep, we're good on the dimensionals part. And then last but not least, these are the in color 2021 to 2023 in color jewels. So it has all five of that year's in colors, including polished pink. And that's what I'm using. So I have some extras here from, I think our team meeting when Landa had cut for it, we had a lot left over of different colors. So she coordinated them by colors for me. And uh, so anyway, I wanna use those up before I go into these bigger packs. I have my take your pick tool. I like to use the pointy end. Some people like to use the paddle for what I'm about to do. And some people prefer the putty. Oops, let me smush that putty down so it'll be nice and ready to stick. Um, and this tool comes with other like stylus attachments and then you can purchase an attachment for our uh, die cutting machine as well. Anyway, I'm using it right now with the pointy end to pick up these embellishments that are sticky on the back. So you always need to put your finger on top of the embellishment before you pick it up. These jewels have a large and a small, so I'm using the small one. And what I love about using a tool like this is you can see exactly where you wanna place it on your project. You'd be like, does it look good there? No, and you're, in my case, I say my big fingers are not in the way. The tool's a lot smaller. But I'm just putting five of these on the tree. Five small ones. And they match so good. It's a pink decorated tree. So cute, so cute. Um, Pat, I don't know. I can research that, but I don't know how to put CC on while I'm talking. But in Facebook, in YouTube, it's on there after the video post in YouTube, it has closed captioning. Um, Cause I have deaf customers as well. So, um, but, and if Pat private message me, please, if you know someone who does that, cause maybe I can ask them. Uh, cause I don't know how you do it while you're doing Facebook live. I know if you're doing it on zoom to Facebook live, it does that, but I don't do zoom for these. So anyway, uh, probably TMI there, but here is that second card. I think it's so cute. I love the colors. I'm just really still inspired by the whimsy and wonder paper that has the polished pink and like blushing bride colors. So that's why I'm using still so much pink in my Christmas. Yeah, the bling makes that tree, Diana. It totally does. I agree. Um, so y'all have a chance to win these three cards from today again. By commenting on the video don't forget and <clears throat> I have one more card to make here and I just went <laughs> I'll deal with this later my original one kind of fell apart on one section so I'm gonna grab some scotch tape so I can fix that on this one okay so this one is to me a wow card our base is cherry cobbler. It's a regular fold though, but I do have a piece of basic white to go inside since cherry cobbler is so dark. So that's four by five and a fourth. Then I have a pre die cut um, stitched so sweetly, which I'm not die cutting on the camera today, but I do that a lot. So if you need help on that, I can refer you to a previous video. Um, anyway, these are called Stitch So Sweetly dies from our annual catalog, and I used the largest scallop rectangle die to, to die cut a piece out for that. And I have a scrap of basic white. I'm looking at all my pieces here. 
Um, I'm going to, I didn't bring a scrap out, but on a piece of our gold foil, I stamped and embossed part of the gifts. So I'll tell you about that at the time. Then I also, uh, where is it? Let me grab this designer paper <clears throat> from, here it is. I wanted to stamp a, the dress image, the skirt that I used earlier on a piece of designer paper and cut it out. Lots of people have done this over on Pinterest and in Demonstrator Planning Place, our, our Demonstrator Facebook group and all that stuff. Um, anyway, and the design, the pattern I ended up wanting came from this brand new designer paper, Abstract Beauty. And it is these, actually right here, these gold polka dots. So it's a white background with large gold foil polka, dot, polka dots. So, um, I'm sure you could recreate this card with any paper you have that has gold dots on it. We've had many in the past and all that stuff. But that's what I use. So that's brand new. That will be available January 4th to customers and now if you join or are a demonstrator. Um, so here's, I did not stamp it in black, but here's the piece I did it from. I tested black and it was a fail. Then I also have a four by five and a fourth piece of that same designer, same pack of designer paper tidings and trimmings, but it's a different design. This is my favorite design from that whole pack, which is an evergreen background with misty moonlight, soft succulent, cherry cobbler, and crumb cake, like Christmassy floral images on it. So pretty. And then if you notice, I heat embossed let's celebrate right at the bottom of it directly on the designer paper it's four by five and a fourth this will be a portrait style card so bottom center it says let's celebrate and that is from peaceful deer which is in the holiday catalog but it is carrying over it will be available continuously so it's photopolymer um, let's celebrate is a cute small greeting so i needed small first of all, because of how this card ended up. And I needed it, or I liked this style and font to match with the girl in the dress. Hopefully all that makes sense. Um, so anyway, here's the Let's Celebrate stamp, but I have pre-done that because you saw me heat emboss on the first card. That'll save us a little bit of time here. <laughs> Kim, this stamp set is... Uh, low inventory and it's retiring so if you want to order it jump on that today um okay what else do i need to say oh i forgot to show y'all can i go back in time the last card i meant to say i wanted to do a non-christmas card so the last one is the girl it's the z fold the girl holding the christmas tree um with christmas colors of course and paper for an additional sample, I made the same, the bottom is colored exactly the same, the legs and um, coat of the girl. But then on top, I used the other stamp that comes in the set where she's holding with her coat and everything, a bouquet. So I colored it in more just generic colors like so saffron or pale papaya. Yeah, pale papaya and so saffron. And then I put it on a pale papaya base. I still used polished pink where that was. And then on the, where the designer paper is, I used a piece of basic white that was embossed with the macrame embossing folder. And then for the greeting, I used a wonderful stamp set called Create with Friends <laughs> that you should purchase for sure. It's in the annual catalog. This is uh, my million dollar stamp set that I got to help design with Stampin' Up. Um, so I stamped Celebrate sideways on the right in polished pink, and then the whole girl image is moved over more to the left, so that can show. And then when you open it, I stamped you all down the left side repeatedly, Celebrate you, in um, what color? Pale papaya. So... Sorry, I meant to show that right away. Um, so this stamp set, I really debated, but 
the gifts can always be birthday or anytime you're giving a gift. The tree, I don't know if that's all occasion or not. Um, and the bouquet can be all occasion, but it is wintry. Don't forget, she's wearing a scarf in the one with the bouquet. So she has a scarf and gloves and all that. So it's winter, but can be all occasion. So anyway, sorry, forgot to show that. I don't, I, if I waited till the end, I always forget. Um, okay, so back in time, or back to where we were. And I forgot what part I was saying. I think I'm just gonna start with making the card and just tell you all the parts as we go. So our card base is Cherry Cobbler. We'll fold that in half. Uh, it's just the same size as all the other ones though. Five and a half by eight and a half with the bone folder there. And then this white, I did not stamp on for the inside. So it just goes inside to give us something light to stamp, to write a note on, I should say. But you could stamp a sentiment or image if you want, but I would stamp it before I glued that down if I were gonna do that. Avoid those mistakes. Okay, then um, I have a scrap of basic white and the scallop white. So I'm gonna stamp on those. The This girl is gonna be wearing the skirt because of the designer paper skirt. Looking for my black ink pad. Um, so I will stamp at the bottom of the scalloped um, what is it called? Scalloped rectangle. These, the skirt and feet in memento black. Toward the bottom. Same as before. So very close to the stitch marks there on that die. And then on the scrap, I'm going to stamp the gifts. I couldn't remember if I was stamping these again. I think they're dirty, so let me clean them real quick. And then um, they get stamped in Memento Black as well. This is a scrap, so I'm just stamping in the middle. I'm going to hand cut that out. And then I also cleaned off that gift stamp and stamped it on a scrap of our gold foil paper from our annual catalog, gold foil, ooh ah. Heat embossed it, stamped into Versmart, heat embossed it with gold embossing powder and hand cut out. So it's the two boxes right in the middle that are, there's like a long skinny one and then a tall short one. Those were the only two I saw that would really work for that technique. They don't have bows, they're not partially cut off, they're not, they don't have hands in them. So it's those two gifts right in the middle. I wanted it to be gold and sparkly and I didn't want to have to color every gift on there. So it killed two birds with one stone. <laughs> that was my thought process anyway. Um, and then for the skirt, I stamped it in Versamark ink on this designer paper. And I heat embossed it in gold embossing powder and I hand cut it out. So, I tried stamping it in black, and I didn't like it, especially for this gold, these gold dots. I wanted a gold polka dot skirt. Um, this was, verse, um, sorry, this was Memento Black ink, which I knew wouldn't work, but I tested it anyway. But if you notice, there's no stamping on the dots, because I waited and waited, and I heat set it, and it still rubbed off. So, I went ahead and took a paper towel and rubbed all that ink off, because it won't dry on those dots, because it's water-based. Then this one was my attempt with stays on. Now, I needed to re-ink my stays on pad and I did and tried it again and it was darker. But also stays on just does not play well with photopolymer stamps. So you can do it if you're careful and clean them quickly, but it's really sticky on photopolymer stamps. It's not good. But stays on is an ink that will stamp on non-porous surfaces and dry almost instantly. So if it was a red rubber stamp, that would have been fine. Hopefully I'm making sense with all this information. Okay, so I have my skirt. It's gonna be so cute, right? Now, a little coloring, but again, 
I pre-colored to save you guys time, save us all time. But for this one, I used Soft Succulent, Misty Moonlight, Cherry Cobbler, and Ivory. We also have bronze, but we also have, those come together, on ivory and bronze. But let me see if I have this chart. Yeah, there's actually a ton of color combinations you can use with different pens that we have to get skin tones. So whatever skin tone you want. Now, I got this chart from this girl in New Zealand, Jackie Williams, stamphappy.co.nz. Um, and then I printed it and I colored the color she said. So there's even where you like bronze and light petal pink mixed together, for example. So you can mix colors to make the perfect skin tone. But I just went with ivory today to keep it simple and quick. <laughs> no mixing, no, you know, blending, whatever. Okay, so for the coloring, real quick, her shoes are just dark cherry cobbler. So I use the fine point. They're tiny little shoes. And I have a sample I'm going to show y'all after this that Chris made, which was the, my inspiration for this card. And she stamped those shoes on a gold. I don't even know how she did it, honestly. I guess she did stamp them on a gold paper and hand cut them out and glued them back on. No. I was like, I'm not doing that, Chris. Um, and then, of course, real quick, ivory on the legs, whatever color you want. Ivory is actually like almost darker than my natural skin tone. Petal pink is more my natural. Um, and then of course ivory on the hands over here. So I'll just do one arm real quick. It's like an arm and the hands with no clothing on it, so to say. <laughs> um, and then we know we don't need to color those middle two gifts. So I just mixed and matched these colors. I used like dark succulent for this bow that's on the top gift. It's kind of sitting at an angle on her stack. Probably about to fall if she's like me. Although I wouldn't be dressed like this. <laughs> um, and then I, this is the only gift, the very top one that I added some blending to. I used some dark cherry cobbler under the bow where like sh that would make shadows and then quickly colored the whole thing with light cherry cobbler. Remember when you're blending to go over the parts and you can do light first if you want but either way you're you're going over the previous color when you blend. That's what literally blends it. Sorry, I'm getting very quiet while I'm coloring. And also, I forgot. There's something about coloring. It makes me put my head at a weird angle for the microphone. Um, and then I did dark misty moonlight on this little ribbon. And then light soft succulent on the box. The next box is dark cherry cobbler with a... I think dark soft succulent stripe. Skip these two middle ones. Then we have the very bottom is light misty moonlight. And the next one up is dark soft succulent. So that is how I colored it and then hand cut them out. Of course, these gifts will be end up being on top. It's going to look really good when it's all put together. And then I have her with her little legs and... Um, what am I trying to say? Legs and shoes colored. Okay, so let me start gluing this together. Although, mm, mm, no, I need to do this step first. So, I have the skirt here. And again, I totally copied this idea from Chris. The fork does not have to do with this idea. Um, but it was to add some a ruffle at the bottom. But, uh... I don't know where my tape, I have, oh, here it is. I need, I'm going to need scotch tape because my other ribbon did not hold up. So I just need to secure it better. Okay, so we're going to add a ruffle at the bottom of this skirt. So let me grab my silicone craft sheet. Let's 
going to be cute. I'm going to add stamp and seal on the back of the skirt. The silicone craft sheets just to keep me getting from getting excess adhesive on my table since I'm I wanted it all the way to the edge. Okay, so I have this holiday carryover gold shimmer ribbon. That means unless we run out, you can get this ribbon until January 3rd and you can't get it until next Christmas, next July when the new catalog, the new holiday catalog comes out. So if you want more of this now, get it now. Okay, so I Look at my sample. Yes. Um, I wanted a clean edge over here on the left where I start this little ribbon thing. So I folded it to the back, just a small piece to the back. What that means is there's not a rough edge here on the left. But then my card kind of popped open. My ribbon kind of popped open. So I'm just going to use scotch tape to secure this also. And I'll do more. Um, but the, the adhesive I put back there allows me to form this ruffle shape. So I'm going to, now I'm nervous about doing this on the video, but I'm just bending the ribbon. Go a little more. I'm looking at the front of it because I want it to look cute. And I'm like pulling it back and folding it. That's the word, not bending. Folding it back and forth. So I'm making a ruffle. I'm no seamstress in like real sewing. <laughs> um, but that's all you do. You can pull it back up and reform it if you don't like how it turned out. So it's very forgiving. I didn't cut a piece of this ribbon off. That way I'm not wasting if I use less or I have a weird transition if I need more. So it's better if you can do it from the roll or like if you were cutting this for a class for your customers, um, you would give them a longer piece than they needed for sure. That way they're guaranteed to have enough. Can y'all see the little ruffle there? This one's way more imperfect than my first one, but I think that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and add some tape over here on the back. And I can add more. Um, but I want this right edge to be folded over back as well so that it's smooth there. So I folded that. Now I'm holding it to the back and I'm going to trim that off. I'm just going to scotch tape the heck out of the back of this. <laughs> and I'm just going to put some down over the middle section. See? Super cute. Who wouldn't want to wear this skirt in real life <laughs> if you looked good in skirts like that? Um, okay, so now I'm going to start putting it together. So I have my designer paper that says, let's celebrate. I will attach that to my cherry cobbler card base. Let's see if y'all are still here. Hey, Lori, thanks for sharing. This paper piecing is perfect. Yes, Pat, um, to use scrap, she says. So Grab all your designer papers. See which ones would be cute in skirts. I did see this one used with a more spring-looking um, card where they used the gingham paper from the, um, what is it called? Pansies, I think, designer paper. So, yeah, any designer papers you have that, that you would like those designs to be in. Now, my scalloped rectangle, I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals. So... Um, this is a larger piece of paper, so I'll use a little more than usual. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just to balance it out. Stampin' Up! Actually, I remembered this when I was making these cards. They showed us at On Stage like a way to, you add, I'm just putting this right in the center of this card, and it's above the greeting, of course, because I made sure that was stamped really low. Um, you add dimensionals like only to one part of your cardstock and then glue the other part flat, and they're like, it's a way to add some dimension, but not too much for mailing and blah, blah, blah. So it was interesting. Don't know if I'll do it, but interesting. Okay, my skirt. Stampin' Dimensionals. This is a very dimensional 
heavy card. So I'll do a couple at the top and about three toward the bottom. Hopefully that tape won't have anything to do with these not sticking. So of course this skirt just goes right over the black stamped skirt. <laughs> so cute. And then uh, let me go ahead and add the gifts on top of the gifts with dimensionals. Just a couple there. So get this closer so I can see, just try to cover up that black part. So that is popped up on there. Then dimensionals on the back of this piece, the gifts. So I'll do like three, like a triangle. You see something I stamped back there that didn't work out on, I don't even know what project that was because I don't remember using any little berries like that on these. So I will attach this a little lower like a little below the top of the skirt so that it covers up any imperfections there. It's already looking super cute, right? But then I was like, let's put a bow on the front of this dress. And then I tried to make a bow and it was too big even though I made it really small. Let me put that gold ribbon. <laughs> oh, right in front of me. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, you can do a fork bow. So I did a fork bow just recently on a video here on Facebook Live. Um, oh, and then, yeah, I remember something I did different today. Anyway, I did a bow recently, so I'm not gonna like do the super, super slow-mo, but you take a fork, like a, from your kitchen, this is just like a normal eating fork, whatever they're called, serving, I don't know. No, it's not serving, to eat. <laughs> and then you wrap your ribbon all the way around it on the left side meaning it's not through any of these tines it's just around the left side so you have a piece coming out on top and a piece coming out on the back the back piece is lower and if you pre-cut this it will be longer so your top one will be a little shorter but i'm doing it from my roll right now um now in this case i'm actually not going to use the tails so i don't need this one to be super long on the back I just need it to be long enough to work with so I'm just going to see if this is long enough so now you take the back one you never let go of this left side you hold it but not where you cover everything up you have to hold it on the very edge and then you take the piece that's coming out on the right and it's lower it needs to be going down and the top one up so that this can actually go over this top one and wrap around it and then you put that top one through the top tine center, I should say, center time. And then you come underneath from the back through the center time under everything. And then you grab that with your same hand and pull. And now you start pulling everything really tight. And when you get it nice and tight and you really think you're good to go, you can let go of your left side. But I would scoot it to the bottom of the fork at that point because it's flipped off of this fork many times when I made fork bows because I was in a rush and too too big of a rush. Um, so I'm going to tie this really tight, but you always want to direct the tails how you want them to be on your card. In this case, I'm not using the tails, but if you pull them straight up and straight down, they stick that way permanently because this is actually a knot. It's not a real bow. Okay, then you take that off. This is the back of your bow. This is the front of your perfect, gorgeous bow. And I'm just going to cut these tails off completely. So, zero waste right there, still on my roll. And then just a little over here because I used the shortest piece I could. And um, now I have this gorgeous bow to put on her skirt. Um, blue dot, of course, and it goes right there, and that's it, and I really like this card. I hope y'all do, too. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we cleared the space there. So there it is. She's very fancy. This is a, like what I would picture Catherine Smith actually looking like going to a Christmas party back in the day. 
right, Catherine? I bet it would. She would dress this way. <laughs> Very fancy. Um, that bow's a little wonky. Here's the original. So my tape, my skirt thing popped off. I saw it just now when I went to start to make the card, and I tried to fix it real quick, but it will be fixable, but I need to not be in a rush. But see how more perfect my little um, things were, which was for who knows why. Things just come out better sometimes because I did that in a rush as well. I do think this bow is better, so I'm going to fix this one, and this will be the prize card if you win. So make sure you say hi or comment on the cards today, and uh, comment on the video, I should say, to have a chance to win these three cards. So this will be the one, but let me bring back all three of them. We started out with simple black and white, and then we went to um, cute pink and green Christmas, and then we went to, to me, a very fancy card. Um, thank you, thank you. Let's see. Uh, Diana, thank you very much. Depends on how many people watch this video. <laughs> share, share, share. Um, thank you, Pat. Oh, that was very sweet. Oh, let me show y'all Chris's card. So this is one Chris made, Chris Tremere. She's a team member, but also a friend of mine. And um, move these so you can really see it. She made this using the Create with Friends stamp set, as well as um, Delivering Cheer. She used the brushed gold. It's called brushed metallic specialty, I think, and it comes with rose gold and regular gold. But she used the regular gold. She did stamp and stays on. Um, see how she hand cut out these shoes from that gold brushed gold paper crazy um and she just colored her gifts like in a totally different color scheme than i did more well there's yellow and i don't know they're more pastel-y for some reason and um hand cut it out and all that stuff but anyway she used lace for her trim on her skirt uh and it says let's celebrate together and she also used this painted christmas paper which is i believe <laughs> dimension on there. I believe that's coming back next year in the holiday catalog. So that was my inspiration, but then this is what I ended up coming up with. So now, now you saw everything, hopefully. <laughs> All right, let me look at these comments. Um, so I want to thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, let me check these. Yes. Oh, I meant to say on Chris's, she also added um, that Wink of Stella on the ribbons on all the bows, which you may not be able to see on the video, but in person, it's really pretty. And she has wonderful gems on there. Ooh, thank you guys for the hearts. Love the ruffles, Jackie. Um, thank you guys. Pat loves the last card. Thank you so much. Kathy loves the ruffles. Mary loves the last one. Kathy, yes, definitely for someone very special, right? Yeah, I think I, I don't know what I did on this bow, but it's wonky. I could just redo this bow, actually. I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Whoever wins these will, will like them. <laughs> um, cool. Well, I'm glad you guys like them. Thank you so much. If you don't have that stamp set, today's the day. It's it's low inventory. And Stampin' Up! is not um, taking our begging for them to make more stamps <laughs> request. They're not making more stamps as far as we know, which we were told that at the beginning. So it's photopolymer. It's super cute. Um, of course, you won't get it in time for Christmas unless you pay the expedited shipping, and then UPS is not guaranteeing that, but you can pay expedited shipping when you register, when you order, but um, otherwise, for regular shipping, it definitely won't come before Christmas, but it'll be great for next year or any late Christmas cards you need to make or whatever, um, but it is low inventory, and that since yesterday it went low. I also used Encircled and Warmth, which is retiring, and I also used Peaceful Deer, which is not retiring, and of course, Create with Friends. <laughs> 
Cool. All right. Well, oh my gosh, I just saw how long this video is. I had no clue I had gone so long. All right. I better go. I'm going to try to figure out my microphone situation. And uh, thank you guys so much. Merry Christmas. I do plan. Oh, yay. Pat ordered hers yesterday. Smart. You knew what was coming. Um, uh, I do plan to go live next week, but I and I think it will be on Wednesday. But I will post an email like I always do to let you know when I'm going live. But I'm planning on Wednesday, so I will see you before Christmas. But just in case I don't, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Have a great week. Good luck finishing everything. That's what I'll be doing after my class this Saturday, this weekend. <laughs> And, um, yeah, thank you, Susan. Enjoy you guys' weekend as well. Hopefully, it will be nice. And, yeah, have a great one. All right, thank you guys very much. I will see y'all later. Bye.